Praise the hour. If we'd all stand for opening prayer. Great and awesome Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is Khan Nathania, Abel Yael Hawkins, ask your permission to come before your wonderful throne of mercy, being seated of the last day's anointed witness, our pastor and overseer, Yisrael Abel Hawkins, through our most high, most honorable high priest, leader, guide, and judge, Yahshua Messiah. Father, we thank you and praise you for bringing us to another wonderful class that we would rehearse the words, Father Yahweh, that come forth from your, from your witness that you have inspired. And we do pray, Father Yahweh, that you would help us to understand these words, Father Yahweh, and utilize them in our lives, put them in practice, that we would grow in your ways. We bless you, Father. We thank you in unity with the great body of priests, being seated of the last is known to witness, Yusuf Hawkins, through Yahshua Messiah's name we do pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Shalom. Uh, we are continuing in our study of the 3020 issue of the newsletter, and uh, we're picking up on page eight. Um, and we're going to start where it says on the bottom left column, Revelation 18. And we're going to be from uh, covering the information on page eight through page 10. Uh, well, Pastor had. had uh, written in this newsletter, it says, Revelation 18.5 shows you the evil as the gods, and we know where that comes from, Genesis 3.5. So, shows you, Revelation 18.5 shows you the evil as the gods that all 4,199 religions practice. And this is, of course, sin. So, the next obvious uh, question would be, well, what is sin? And Pastor, in the same newsletter, gives you the scriptural definition to sin, which is found in 1st Yachanon, chapter 3, verse 4. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the laws. And if you notice, sin is the transgression of the laws is underlined. It's showing you that that information is what Pastor is covering in this newsletter, and in, in it's of uh, importance for the points he wants to raise in the newsletter. So there you have it, the scriptural definition is sin. And anybody out there outside of our uh, the house of Yahweh that doesn't know the definition of sin, you can refer them to that scripture and verse. And... If you continue on in the newsletter, you'll see that uh, Pastor also put down uh, on the same page, sin is the opposite of righteousness. Sin is the opposite of righteousness. And you can do an in-depth study just on that statement as well as the previous scriptural verse that was just read. And you'll come up with a wealth of information from the scriptures that can cross-reference each other and be in support of each other. Now, Pastor also gives you the scriptural definition for righteousness, and that's found in Deuteronomy 6.25, and it's also mentioned on page 8 in this newsletter. And it reads, And it will be our righteousness if we observe and do all these laws before Yahweh our Father, as he commanded us. <clears throat> now, to keep these laws, to do these laws, it's an act of righteousness. It's righteousness. And Yahweh's commanded us to do so. So we know that Yahweh's laws are primary and of extreme importance. Now, if you take from these two scriptures, 1 Yachanon 3, 4, and Deuteronomy 6, 25, and you look up some of these words, uh, what I did was I took transgression from dictionary.com, and it reads, an act that goes against a law, a rule, or a conduct, an offense, an infringement, violation of the law. So that further supports that uh, sin is the transgression of laws as well. So when we don't perform or practice these laws that are, we're being taught uh, by pastor and in the house of Yahweh, we are uh, actually 
participating in sin and as we know sin brings forth curses and curses as pastor just recently brought out not too long ago are plagues as well so and he in the newsletter he goes right into first yakinon chapter 3 verses 7 8 and 10 and if when you read these scriptures you're going to see the actual cause and what uh, sin brings upon a person and who you belong to little children let no man deceive you he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous from the beginning for this purpose the son of Yahweh was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and the works of the devil as we all should know by now is sin and in this the children of Yahweh and the children of the uh, of the devil are manifest meaning there's a dis distinction between the two the children of Yahweh are practicing righteousness the children of the devil are sinning so there's no middle ground here it's one or the other and continuing on in verse 10 in this the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh, and he does not, Ahab, love his neighbor. Now, during my research through this, I, I went through uh, finding a list of uh, scriptures that are companions to the information that Pastor is bringing out in this liz uh, literature and support of the major content in there, and I want to uh, share them with you. And uh, what I'd like to do is read uh, the first scripture that pastors mentioned in the, uh, the uh, literature that I opened up with, which was Revelations 18.5. And basically it states, For her sins have reached on to heaven, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. So now, they reached up to heaven. The immediate, first level of heaven, the immediate atmosphere right here, are beneficial microbes that is teeming in the environment working together. The problem we have right now as a result of sin and the curses that come from sin is that they're sick and they're weakened and not able to do their jobs that are beneficial to mankind. So we have to be mindful of it. And I thought this scripture was a great companion scripture uh, uh, to include. Uh, also, we got uh, Isaiah chapter 24, verses 5 to 6. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants of it because they transgress the laws, change the ordinances, which show us how to keep these laws, and broke in the everlasting covenant. Everlasting. That means forever, throughout eternity. And we overlook that sometimes. But Yahweh has commanded it. And if you read on in verse 6 of the same chapter in Isaiah, because of this, the curse, the plague, has devoured the earth, and they who dwell therein are desolate and a few men left. And this, of course, is referring to that nuclear burning, which is the seventh plague. Uh, well, uh, the final one-hour burning is the seventh plague. So the earth will be burned as a result. And uh, well, uh, if you notice on my uh, handout there, I also have uh, the word iniquity. Now, iniquity, uh, if you don't know what the definition of it, can throw you off in that scriptural verse. But if you look it up in the Greek, it's word number 458. It means illegality, violation of the law, iniquity, wickedness, unrighteousness, Okay, and we know what that is now because righteousness is keeping the laws. So if you're unrighteous, you're not keeping the laws. And it says transgress the laws. It also has the Hebrew word 571, which means evil, iniquity, sin. And over the years, Pastor has expounded upon these definitions in various uh, news articles and uh, prophetic words, as well as uh, sermons. And he said... Basically, iniquity is doing away with the laws of Yahweh, pushing them aside, ignoring them, rejecting them, changing the laws of Yahweh, and overall not being subject to these same laws. 
So we have to um, uh, be mindful of uh, these things. And then I go into Ecclesiastes 12, 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Reverence Yahweh by observing, keeping practices and the laws, for this is the whole duty of man. That's our responsibility, an obligation, a requirement. He didn't say just some people or for the Jews only. He didn't say that for everybody. So we got to be mindful of it. And if you can uh, take down these other scriptures that are up, I don't have time to read them all. I just wanted to show you the uh, uh, companion scriptures for, for the information in the newsletter. Now, continuing on, on page 8, it says the... Uh, burn, uh, it says burn the earth in one hour. So what I did very quickly was looked up that word burn the earth in one hour in the Amatria. And this is what I came up with. It's, it says basically um, I had the numbers in uh, Jewish was 111, English 1554, simple 259. 111 means Balak, it's devastator, from the Hebrew word 110, to waste, lay waste, to annihilate, make waste. In driver, uh, Brown Driver Briggs, it says destroy. In the Hebrew 1154, you have heaps from 1150, a heap, a wave, a bellow, rock pile, ruin, stone, and heaps. And I said, how appropriate. Yahweh had encoded in the Amatia this nuclear destruction from this phrase, that pastor used in the newsletter. It correlates, and it corresponds with a destruction of a city, a nuclear destruction, the one-hour burning. So I thought that was uh, very interesting as well. And uh, also I had some companion scriptures that go hand-in-hand hand with it. Yael, chapter 2, verse 3, verses 30 to 31. And you'll find this is in support of this one-hour nuclear burning. A fire devours in front of them, and behind them, a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden in front of them, but behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, nothing will escape them. In verse 30, And I will show wonders in the heavens, in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. In verse 31, The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes. In Revelation 16.8, and the fourth Malak poured out his bowl upon the sun, and the power was given to hurt and scorch the men with fire. Verse 19, And it came to pass that that great city divided into three parts, referring to New York City, and the cities of the nations fell, and the great Babylon came in remembrance before Yahweh to give to her the cup of wine and the fierceness of his wrath, which should be judgment. And in Revelation 17, verse 12 and 16, and the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have yet have not received a kingdom, but receive authority as kings for one hour with the beast. And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, these will hate the whore and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. In Revelations chapter 18, verses 10, 17, and 19, standing afar off, fear for torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for one hour your judgment has come. So take down these scriptures, put it in the margin of your newsletter, or get a sticky and stick it on that page of the newsletter so you can have a reference with it. It has a wealth of information. There's so much more. And again, I, I can't uh, cover it all in the time allotted for me. So I ask that as I post these things that you take them and... Uh, you know, jot them down. So now, uh, continuing on in, in, in the uh, newsletter, Pastor says, underneath where it says, burn the earth in one hour, are the God worshippers able to actually burn the earth in one hour? Answer is absolutely yes, and I just proved it to you from the various scriptural verses that we just read. Now, there is another thing uh, also to present here that's of importance. Only in this present uh, prophesied generation pastor has written in the newsletter that started in the year 1934 there's three other things that has taken place in that year 
The birth of the witness, Israel Hawkins, was in 1934. The patent for the atomic bomb nuclear energy was developed and put forth in 1934, as well as the invention of the computer in 1934. Three important facts. Now, I'm going to read from the newsletter on page uh, 9 uh, the patent that Leo Sislod, uh, uh who patented the atomic bomb. And the article is just an excerpt, and it says here, the Hungarian physicist Leo Sislod was the first person to conceive of the nuclear chain reaction and the atomic bomb. He was noted for his contributions to the fields of thermodynamics, biophysics, and the development of atomic energy. Leo Sislod was part of a group of scientists that invented the atomic bomb and a part of the Manhattan Project. Uh, continuing on in the same article, Leo Sislod, nuclear chain reaction patent. On July 4, 1934, Leo Sislod filed the patent application for the method of producing nuclear chain reaction, a.k.a. nuclear explosion. His British patent included a description of neutron chain reactions to create explosions and the concept of critical mass that the patent was given to the British War Office of the war effort and that uh, article came from the nuclearweaponsarchive.org okay so we see uh, that there is a number of scriptures in support of this and uh, also I would like to read to you um, two scriptures uh, one from Mititia 2429 uh, what Yahshua wrote, it said, uh, immediately but after the tribulation of these days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light, and the stars, which are the satellites, will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. When we have a nuclear exchange, they're going to be attacking these satellites that are in outer space, and they're going to take, take them down in order to knock out a power grid and various other things. So I, I just wanted you to bear, bear that in mind. Also, I'm going to read from the 20th uh, book of Israel uh, that we have here. Uh, it's cha uh, ver uh, chapter 26, verse 22. This plague that you got right now, this coronavirus, you can't kill it. There's no cure for it. There's no preventive for it. You've created it with your sins. It's grown to what is right now 6,000 years. The way it will be cleansed, the way the earth is going to be cleansed is with fire this time. Yes, that comes from the sixth. Stop uh, comes from uh, uh, with the sixth. Stop the coronavirus. That comes with the sixth and seventh plagues. That was a typo there. I apologize. There are seven of these plagues, and they're going to get worse over the next two years. It's going to end with Revelations 18, the burning, a great one-hour burning. So, continuing on in the uh, newsletter. Uh, we see that uh, they have these bombs in the generation that will uh, that they will use in this generation. There's no technology not used. Okay, Yeshua has an answer uh, for that, and he says in Yachanan 13, 19, Now I tell you before it comes, in order that when it does come to pass, you might believe that I am he. Luke 21, 31. So you, in the same way, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. And he said in Luke 24, 25, Then he said to them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that Yahweh's prophets had spoken. So, continuing on in this newsletter, on page 9, it says, Another Passover gathering, the Feast of Passover, a shadow from things to come. And when you look up this word shadow, it's uh, Hebrew word 6738, and it means protection, shelter. Okay, so we're going to be protected and sheltered from the things that are coming. And for your notes, you can jot down uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, and Psalms 91, uh, 1, and Micaiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. It ex further expounds upon uh, this information. And Pastor has written in the newsletter as well, Exodus 9, verses, uh, chapter 9, verses 16 through 20, but I have raised you and spared you for this very purpose, that I might show you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. And as of yet, you still exalt yourself against my people, not letting them go. 
Therefore, at this time tomorrow, the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen in Egypt from that day is, is, was founded and now and until, the, uh, uh, until it come to pass. Behold, send now and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field, for the hail shall come down on every man, every beast which is found in the field and not brought home, they shall die. Those who have feared the word, uh, word of Yahweh, the officials of Pharaoh, made his servants and livestock flee to them. Exodus chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh, for it will come to pass that he and his officials will harden their hearts, and that, that you will know that I will perform my signs in front of them. And you will tell your children and your children's children how harshly the Egyptians with how I performed my signs among them that you will know that I am Yahweh. So Moshe and Aaron came to Pharaoh and said to them, This is what Yahweh, the father of the Hebrews, says, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, and that they can worship me. Or else, if you refuse to let my people go, tomorrow the locusts will come upon your country. And as we know today, the beastly government system is holding back our people throughout the world. And they're not letting them go. And also, these scriptures remind us that we need to be ready for what's coming in our preparations. So I, I ask, uh, brothers and sisters, that, um, you know, in conclusion, the importance of what I'm stressing to you is the importance of reading every word in order uh, that you connect the word to what Pastor has written and the points he's bringing out in his newsletters. So, uh, and in, overall in his writings. So that's very important. Get your companion scriptures, have them listed, have everything in there. And uh, I thank you for my, uh, your time. And I ask that you all please stand as I welcome to the podium our beloved Kahan, Nathaniel Hawkins. Praise Yahweh. Shalom. Men of Yahweh, please be seated. All right, we're going to be continuing in the um, newsletter for the third Roman month. Okay, and the heading is the Passover could save your life. Okay, and of course it, it could save your life because the decision is up to you and I to accept the teachings of the house of Yahweh where it concerns the protection that Yahweh is going to give us. So we're going to pick up on page 10. Okay, at the heading, it'll be the middle of the first column. And it says, the feast of protection. Now, if I could have my definition slide, the feast of protection, okay? From the Oxford Languages Dictionary online, protection, and I want you to pay attention to these meanings. The first meaning is pretty obvious, okay? But the second one actually has a lot of Yahweh's plan in it, okay? It shows here that the first one is to keep safe from harm or injury, okay? That's one of the things that we, one of the benefits that we have coming to Yahweh's protected place, we are protected from harm and injury because if you remember when um, the, the, uh, in Waco, when the, um, the, Bra the Branch Davidians um, were burned to death, a lot of them were burned to death, um, those, that same calamity was supposed to come this way, was aimed, they were aiming to have it come in this direction. But Yahweh protected his people from that harm and that, that injury. But going back to the Oxford uh, Language Dictionary, the, the second definition, okay, the second definition of the same slide, it shows that it's to preserve or guarantee by means of formal or legal measures, okay? 
And the only way to peace is Yahweh's what? Laws. Yahweh's laws is the only way to true peace. That's a legal measure that the universe has to live up to. Okay? Oftentimes we have the laws of the land, which we as citizens have to live up to them. But Yahweh's law, the universe, has to live up to them. Okay? So that's just a definition of protection and what, how important protection is that Yahweh offers us, that Yahweh gives us. Okay? But here it says in Exodus chapter 12, we're going to be reading from verse 1 to 3, verses 5 to 8, and also verse 11 to, verses 11 to 14. It says, And Yahweh said to Moshe and to Aaron, In the land of Egypt, this moon shall be your beginning of moons. Okay? For us, it's the moon of Yahweh. Okay? The moon of Yahweh. It shall be the first, of your, uh, uh, first moon of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel and say, uh, saying, On the tenth day of the first moon. Okay? Remember this. On the tenth day of the first moon, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. Your lamb must be without blemish, a male of the first year. You can take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you must keep it until the 14th day of the same moon. Okay, the 14th day of the same moon. These are the ordinances concerning Yahweh's um, feast of Passover. It says, Then the whole multitude of the congregations of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. Okay, and of, of course, as we remember, between the two evenings is between three o'clock in the afternoon and six o'clock in the evening. Okay, that's between the two evenings that the end, Yahshua effectively performed all of these. As a matter of fact, in the, um, the uh, the Talmud, the writings in the Talmud today that the Jews follow, they have the accounting of the killing. Although they reject him as being the Messiah, they saw fit to write write his uh, the the uh, the killing of Yahshua Messiah and put it into the Talmud today. So all the Jews, all the Jewish scholars have the accounting of the killing of Yahshua Messiah written in their Talmud today. So when it comes down to it, they're not going to have an excuse. It's written in their writings, although they don't consider him to be Messiah. Somehow they, 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 they saw fit to include it in their Talmudic writings. Okay, but um, it says here in verse 8, Then they must eat the meat that night, roasted in fire, uh, uh, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. And in this, um, in this way, you shall eat it with the belt of your waist, the sandals on your feet, and with the staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It's Yahweh's Passover. Because this is, uh, that was verse 11. Verse 12. Because on, on account that the Egyptians sinned against me, Yahweh, transgressing my laws, the laws of Yahweh, this night, all the firstborns of the land of Egypt uh, will be struck down, both men and animals, okay? Both human beings and animals. And judgment will be executed uh, on all the gods, Elohim of Egypt, I am Yahweh. Verse 13, and the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when you see the blood, I will pass over you. You will be protected. Okay, that term pass over shows to be protected. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when the land of Egypt is struck. Verse 14, and this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall uh, keep it as a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations, and you shall keep it as the feast by an ordinance forever. Okay, so it says here, notice verse 14, the feast 
by an ordinance forever. Okay, that is an ordinance that we have to uphold forever. Yahweh created it. Yahweh Yahweh uh, verified it, and Yahweh sanctioned it to be uh, uh, a perpetual ob- uh, observance. Protection forever. Isaiah 66, verse 22 to 24. Okay, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I um, will make, will remain before me, says Yahweh. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, before me, says Yahweh, so will your seed be or your your seed and your name remain that's our names remaining in the 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 book of life okay even in the days of moshe moshe recognized and acknowledged that there is a book of life that has his name written in it okay moshe recognized that the book of life was wasn't just something that we only found out about in the book of revelations no even in the days of moshe they understood and knew about their names being written in the book of life verse 23 okay so this is isaiah 66 and verse 23 and it will come to pass from one new moon to another from uh, one sabbath to another all flesh will come and worship before me says yahweh verse 24 and they will go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men who have uh, transgressed against me for their deadly sins um, are a labor of vanity. Okay, the practice of these deadly sins lead to nothing. They lead to vanity. Bringing a more terrible sickness, pestilence and plague. Neither can they hide their sins because they are absolutely guilty and they will be an abhorrence to all flesh if i could have um um document number 4 the slide number 4 if if you could show document number 4 the slide number 4 I need the Mark of the Beast slide. Okay, so it says here, this is Pastor, this is what Pastor wrote in the Mark of the Beast. Send for our booklet. What Yahweh, this is, this is the, the, the admonition, the warning the Pastor is giving to all of those who will hear. Send for our booklet. What Yahweh's feasts mean to you. Within these pages, are revealed Yahweh's plan of protection for his people. Okay? So these were written in the Mark of the Beast back in 1976. Pastor was showing the protection for Yahweh's people that is offered to those who would come out from among her and keep Yahweh's sacred feasts. Yahweh doesn't, it says, um, Yahweh does not plan to uh, plan a rapture. The rapture doctrine is just another lie of Satan to keep the people uh, complacent about the future, right? Because according to Christianity, you don't have to keep Yahweh's laws. All you have to do is wait around for Jesus to rapture you up, okay? But there's nothing called the rapture in Yahweh's plan. There's no plan for a rapture. There are definitely things that you can can and must do to escape these things coming upon all the world why because revelations 12 9 shows that all the world is deceived okay so continuing here in um on page 10 in the newsletter the middle of the second column it says forever forever is without end that also means eternal life Okay, forever also means eternal life. Compare with Exodus uh, uh, chapter 12. Okay, so compare with Exodus chapter 12. Also put Revelations 18 verses 4 to 5. 
Okay? Revelations 18, verses 4 to 5, verse 8, verse 10, verse 17, and verse 19. And this is what it says in verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So you do not partake in her sins, and so that you do not receive of her plagues. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. Verse 8. Okay? Verse 8. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day. Death and mourning, famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahweh who judges her. Okay? Yahweh is the only source of power. He is the only source of power, and strong is Yahweh who judges our adversary. Verse 10. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Woe, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And we know already that the nuclear, uh, nuclear bombs can be deployed in one hour and reach their target and that target will be destroyed. Verse 17, For in one hour such great riches came to nothing, and every sea captain and all, all the company in, the, uh, in ships, the sailors and all who earned their living from the sea stood afar off. Verse 19, They cast down their, hand, their heads, cried and wept and wailed, saying, Woe, woe, that the city, uh, that great city, in which all, uh, all who had ships in the sea were made rich through her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Now you remember the mark of the beast are the holidays, the keeping and the celebrating of Easter, Christmas, um, St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, all of these different uh, religious religious uh, observances that are also, if you remember, the scripture says that they 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 looked at holiness, which it is their holiness, as a way of making gain. And this is what we see here: that they were made rich off of her delicacies, okay, off of her reverence, and they mourned because of it. But we see here in one hour burning. A few will be left alive, protected. Isaiah 24, verses 1 to 6, it says, Before Yahweh's very eyes, the earth, the earth is made empty, and it is made waste. And the face of it is perverted, and its inhabitants are scattered abroad. And it will be as with the people, so with the priests. As with the servants, so with the, so, um, so with the owner. As with the maid, so with the mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with... Uh, the lender, so with the borrower, as with him who takes usury, so with him who gives usury to him. None will escape. None escape this sentence, except for those who are protected. Verse 3, and the land will be utterly, uh, utterly emptied and utterly plundered, for it has come to pass that Yahweh's judgment, that Yahweh's judgment pronounced. The earth mourns and fades away. This is verse 4. The world mourns and fades away, and the haughty people of the earth languish. Verse 5. The earth is also, the earth also is defiled under, under the inhabitants of it, because they have transgressed the law, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant, and because of this, the curse has devoured the earth. And they who dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left. Well, pastor says, why will, so, why will some be saved? By whom and what? We see here the prophecy of the burning is also spoken of in Malachi 4 and verse 1. So the key, men, when it comes to looking into the, 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 the word of Yahweh, Okay, studying the word of Yahweh is that you have to look, you look at it as a court case, understand and know 
that you are participants in a court case right now. And your duty is to acquire as much evidence that backs up Yahweh's claims as possible. And the key is to use his words. We have been brought to the witness, the witness uh, seat. Okay, we are in the position of fulfilling this work of the seventh, the seventh Malik, who is Yisro Hawkins, Yahweh's great witness in this court case. Okay, so here in Malachi 4, we're going to witness these things and we're going to testify on these, uh, to, to these things that have been written in the account of, um, the prophet Malachi. Verse 1, it says, For the world, um, for the word of Yahweh has, was given to me, saying, Behold, the day comes that will burn like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do evil will be stubble. Um, and the day comes that will burn them up, and it will leave them neither, ran, uh, neither root nor branch. Remember, Yahshua the root, Yisro Hawkins the branch. But for, uh, for you who reverence my name, for you who reverence my name, the light of righteousness will arise with healing in its wings, and you will go out leaping like calves released from the stall. And the word of Yahweh, praise Yahweh, the word of Yahweh was given to me saying, the wicked will be trodden down and they will be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that this will be done. Remember, the laws of Moshe, my servant, which I command through him, I commanded through him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Verse one, see the word evil and compare it to Genesis three and verse five, right? The serpent, the serpent's message uh, was and still is today. Verse five, it's it, it's don't be righteous like Yahweh, be evil like the gods. But we see here in First Yachanan chapter 3, verse 7 to 8, and verse 10 to 15. Little children, let no man, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And he who practices sin is of the devil. Okay, so those are the ones who are going to be destroyed, Right? We need to take these words and, and believe them and trust these words as they come forth from Yahweh's great house. The devil has sinned from the beginning, continuing in verse uh, 8. For this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. In this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh, and he does not love Show Ahab, true Ahab, for his neighbors. For this message that you heard from the beginning, that, he, that we should uh, show Ahab for one another, not as Cain, who was the, of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder his brother? Because his works were evil, but, uh, and his brother's works were righteous. For this message that you heard from the beginning, we should uh, love one another, show Ahab for one another. Verse 12, not as Cain, who was of the evil one, but murdered his brother. Let's go to verse 13. Do not marvel, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because the, uh, we, lo we show Ahab for our brothers. He who does not show Ahab for his neighbor abides in death. Whoever hates his neighbor is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And pastor said here, Cain was of the wicked one. Cain was a God worshiper. Cain rejected Yahweh's righteousness. Like Cain, the 4,199 religions in this present and prophesied generation are of the evil one. And these are, this is how we see the difference. This is how we know the difference between the sons of Yahweh and those who are begotten by the adversary. Those who are begotten by the adversary forsake the way of Yahweh. They practice the mark of the beast. They have the mark of the beast in their forehead, 
which is their thought process, and in their hands, which is their actions. Those things have marked them as belonging to the adversary. But our, our mark, the mark that Yahweh has given to us, are the keeping of his Sabbath days and his feast days, the proclaiming of Yahweh's message and the keeping of the 613 laws in accordance to Yahweh's prophecies. Praise Yahweh. That brings us to the end of the class. And if everyone would stand, we'll go ahead and have closing prayer. Great and awesome Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is Kahan Nathania, Abel Yael Hawkins, asking permission to come before your wonderful throne of mercy. Being seed of the last day's anointed witness, a pastor and overseer, Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and through our most ahab, most honorable high priest, leader, guide, and judge, Yahshua Messiah. Father, we thank you for the understanding that you have given us, Father Yahweh. We, we thank you for calling us out of this sin-sick world, Father Yahweh, considering your servants and recognizing us, Father Yahweh, that we would have a part in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we do pray, Father Yahweh, that we would um, show forth the diligence to make our calling and election sure. And, Father Yahweh, that we would bring honor to you in this court case, Father Yahweh, that our testimony would be used to bring honor and glory to your name, not only throughout this world, but also throughout the universe. We do thank you. We praise you in unity with the great body of priests, being seed of the last days anointed witness, Yisra Hawkins, and through our most ahab, most honorable high priest, leader, guide, and judge, Yahshua Messiah's name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Yahweh bless you, man.